Good morning, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. This very morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you're domiciled around the world, we welcome you to our Friday Q&A session. This very day, the 16th day of April in the year of our most high Elohim, 2021. The time now is 11 minutes past 7, 7 a.m. in the land of Biafra, which means it is 11 minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are around the world. If you're listening to us, this is a live presentation. And as I welcome you, please allow me to encourage you, to ask you to welcome your relatives, your friends, wherever they are. I know that for some people, we broadcast till very late yesterday and took calls up until the very early hours of this morning. I have not gotten much rest or sleep myself, but I did say we're going to come on live this very morning, and that's what we are doing because once in a while it is good for us to get a feel of what you're thinking, a pulse, your advice and your guidance as well, because remember that this is a family all over the world, IPOB. It is good that we should be able to consult our people, should I say, as widely as possible, which we can only do via this very medium via this very program this morning. Once again, I welcome each and every one of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because I do know that some people have already woken up in the Far East, and some people, it is their midnight, and for others, they are still in the evening of Thursday the 15th, especially those who are in California, those who are in Seattle along that very corridor. I welcome each and every one of you this very morning. And as always, we are, should I say, simulcasting on a lot of platforms. We are on YouTube, University of Radio Biafra on YouTube. We are on Twitter, of course, at Mazen Namdekan. We are on Instagram at Mazen Namdekan Official. We are also on my page at Mazen Namdekan Official on Facebook. If you can, if they will allow us this very morning. Yesterday, they did all they could to try to frustrate us. But we are here live once again this very day to, I wouldn't say preach the gospel of heaven, but of course to hear from the children of the Most High himself, the children of light, dear friends all over the world. Our lines will soon open after I must have prayed, but please do get a pen and paper because I'll give you the number to call this morning. It is on signal. The number we are going to interact with today is on signal, please. And I would advise you to take down this number, plus four four is a UK number, plus four four seven seven. Six one eight two five three four six. You can call us or you can send your message, and then we'll be able to hear what you have to say. But more importantly, we want to be able to take your call this morning. We want you to ask us those difficult questions, those questions that gossipers and Anina Webusi have been trying to plan or pin. In your mind, please try to ask us those questions. We'll answer you this very morning, please. Before, what should I say, without further hesitation, we are going to pray very, very briefly, please. We are going to pray this very morning. A very short prayer, should I say, the prayer that Yahweh Heshua prayed when it was on this very earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this very earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now and forevermore we pray. He say, he say, he say. As I said this very day, we are going to take your questions live this very morning. People are saying, most of us on Twitter, we are seeking for something to trend. Um, stop the killing in Ebola, of course. We are going to do that. I think that Uchenna will be able to do something about it today in terms of a topic for us to trend. But our lines are now open once again. If you call us and if we miss your call, somebody said we have, <laughs> I have been calling and calling and calling. I've been calling and calling and calling. We will try and see if we can get you. If you call us and you cannot get us and you appeal, we will do all we can to try and get hold of you. And once you are online, please go straight to the question. Give us your name, 
and where you are calling from, and then ask us the most difficult question that has been exercising your mind since the inception of this great movement called IPOB. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Uh, good morning. Good morning to you, please. Your name and where you're calling from, if you may. My name is Noya I'm coming from Aba. From Aba, please go ahead. We are listening. Go ahead. Uh, Maze, thank you so much for speaking with me. We are listening, yes. Go ahead. What's your question? Maze, to be sincere with you, I don't have any question at all. I just want to thank you for the good work you have been doing. If I should ask any question at all, Maze, it's to commend you for the good work you have been doing. Maze, you are really a great man. Maze, we thank you so much for the work you have been doing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. I thank you. I do appreciate it. But I would very much like people to bring their questions to the table this very morning. I need very, very difficult questions so we can answer them. The more difficult your questions are, the more we are going to be able to answer them. Very, very important, please. There are people who are calling us, of course, as usual, they will call. And if you do miss, or should I say, if you're finding it very difficult getting hold of us, we will endeavor to try to get back at you. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Good morning, sir. Good morning to you, please, your name and where you are. I am Kinsley Chidi And where are you calling from? I'm in Italy. In Italy. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I commend you for all you have been doing for us in the Afro land. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, sir, I want to ask a question on what is happening in Port Harcourt, like, uh, this election. Is it Igwacha? It is Igwacha. It's not Port Harcourt. The name is yes. Igwacha. There is no Port Okereke in England. There is no Port Chijoke in England. There is no Port Mwatuku in England. I have told our people many, many times, all these useless, idiotic names given to us by the British should be jettisoned. There are no African streets, no African names anywhere in Europe or in America. We should stop answering all these idiotic names that they have given to us because we are, we are human beings like they are. That is nothing like Portugal. It's called Igor Chad. That is the name. Please continue. Yes, sir. Exactly. Exactly, sir. You know, what uh, our, our ancestors have uh, said, in power and authority, they, they deceived us for so many so long, and uh, it's now that you have uh, educated us so much that we have begun to know our heritage and our history. So it's a hard time for us to uh, uh, like what is happening in Portugal. The election when Biafra comes, how would come? Could you be able to dismantle this uh, 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 Nigeria Zoo uh, government in our in our in our Biafra? You mean the zoo mentality of electioneering and election rigging? Maybe that is what you're you're pointing at. Now, what we are going to do is very simple. In the land of Biafra, I'm sure you're using a smartphone. Is that correct? Are you you're using a smartphone? Yes, sir. Can anybody? I'm sure you have a lock on your phone. Can anybody get into your phone without your consent? No, sir. Um, maybe, I don't know if you're using the more advanced version of either Android-based uh, or iOS, which is um, the one for Apple. Even, I'm sure you have what is called the facial recognition one. Is that correct? It has to scan your retina before it can let you in. Is that correct? Yes. yes that's you see, to have a very credible, safe um, um, elections is very, very easy. It is just because either people are lazy or they prefer... To, to, should I say, use a system that is easier or that will be easier for them to rig or to maneuver. If you have a, anybody can vote with your phone, if you register, for instance, and nobody can access your phone. If you vote, we know you voted because your eye, your, your, your retina will be scanned before you vote. You can vote with your ordinary iPhone or ordinary smart Samsung phone or any other advanced phone for that matter. You can vote with it. Because no other person can get into your phone. 
We know that the phone is yours. In the zoo, they have a uh, um, um, name registration. They have SIM registration. They have, um, what is that other useless one that they have? Uh, VBN or BVN, whatever registration. They know who is who. If they want to have a credible election in the zoo, they, people can vote from the comfort of their homes. They don't have to go to a polling station. Because my phone that I'm using, you cannot get into my phone. It will scan my eyes before it will allow me to access it. And, and the retina is only you, just like fingerprints, only you that has it anywhere else in the world. It's unique to you. In the land of Biafra, we're not going to have all this nonsense. We're going to have high-tech, high-tech based election system. That's what we're going to have. So people can vote from wherever they are in the world. And it is only that your vote that will count. But of course, you are in a very, we are unfortunately being um, carved highly uncivilized, very contraption like the zoological republic that is why nothing has happened that is why you have this what i call a very primitive approach to the issue of electing public officials because there is no employment all that people the only thing people have is to try to go into politics to go and steal and to loot that is why it is a do or die affair but i can assure you categorically in the land of biafra such nonsense will not obtain because everything we are going to do is going to be modern it's going to be high tech. It's going to be refined. Remember that Biafra is the should I say, complete and exact opposite of the zoo. We are going to do things properly the way human beings should. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for that. Any other question? Yes, sir. It's as regard to the, the issue of uh, 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 the, the talks and the pulling bots, uh, hijacking, and the, all this uh, courtism that uh, help the politicians to have the jack uh, uh, pulling units and other things. How can you control a such situation when Biafra comes? It will not happen because there will be no need for people to congregate anywhere to vote. You can vote from the comfort of your own homes. All the political parties will be concerned about is the integrity of the counting system in the sense that it is going to be run in such a way that no one can hack into it. As simple as that. We will make it so secure that nobody will be able to hack into it. And there must be, of course, capping in terms of how much you can spend during elections. If at all you'll be allowed to spend anything, nobody's going to come out to become a thug because everybody will be meaningfully employed. Every country of the world where you have people meaningfully engaged in one form of employment or the other, you don't have this issue of thugs. And if you eat just running around and snatching ballot boxes, it doesn't happen. It is only in Africa and especially in the damnable zoological republic. Such idiocy cannot obtain in the land of Biafra. As I said, we are going to be a beacon. We're going to be the light of black people all over the world. We are going to do something so markedly different that people will wonder if indeed this country is in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. People are wondering and asking what is our line. I will endeavor to give it to you again now. It's plus four four is a UK number and only on signal, please. It is a UK number on signal. Signal is an app, please. Um, you can use that to try and get hold of us this very morning. The number is plus four four seven seven six one eight two five three four six. I repeat plus four four. Seven seven six one eight two five three four six. If you call us on signal, we will be able to take your call. We are live and we are direct. And if you call us, as I said before, and we miss your call, we shall endeavor to call you back. We shall endeavor to call you back. Very, very important, please, that you do bear with us because I know that a lot of you are calling. And I can assure you that we are doing all we can to ensure that you are part and parcel of this very presentation this morning, regardless of where you're joining us. It is a live presentation. We are live this very morning, taking your questions, or should I say, answering your questions this very morning. Answering your, I don't know why it keeps saying it has failed, it has failed, it has failed. Somebody is saying I should pick up. I, I'm trying to pick up, but it's telling me it has failed. Why? I have no idea. I have no idea it's telling me why it is telling me that it has failed this very morning. I don't know if they're also, should I say, 
attacking our systems. I have no idea if that is what they are doing this very morning. But let we are trying to switch our systems to understand exactly why we have this very um, issue this morning. We are doing the best we can to take as much of your calls as possible. I know that some people are very, very familiar with WhatsApp and that is where they would prefer to call. But in the zoo, we are moving away from WhatsApp. We are moving away from it. We are moving away from it. It is saying failed. I, I don't understand what it means by that. I have no idea what it means by failed. Is it because there are too many calls coming in? I don't know. It is just saying failed, failed, failed. I, I have no idea. Um, I'll, I'll, let us see if we can now switch over to, um, should I say to, because it is here and a lot of people are calling. Is it, is it because the lines are fully packed? I don't know why. Is everything is saying failed? If I try to even pick the call or return it, it says failed because maybe a lot of people are trying to get through. That is what, exactly what it's saying. So what we're going to do to try to mitigate this is I am going to give you another number to try to call us, another line to try to call this morning. This time around on WhatsApp, you will see Radio Biafra University. That is where you will see the number is plus one, is a US number. I think that was the number I used in the US when I was there a couple of weeks back, or should I say a few months back. The number to call is plus one on WhatsApp, please. The other one is Signal. Signal is not picking up this morning for some bizarre reason. The number to call on WhatsApp is plus one, three, four, six, three, double nine, zero, one, double eight. I repeat, plus one is the US number, plus one, three, four, six, three, nine, nine, zero, one, eight, eight, plus one, three, four, six, Three nine nine zero one eight eight. This number is on WhatsApp. Let us try to see if it is going to work. If you call us on that very line, I'm sure we should be able to take your call. I don't know what is going on this morning. The, it's just saying, it's not even ringing. It's just saying failed, failed, failed. I don't know for some strange or bizarre reason. You can leave us a note. You can leave us a voice note. Then we should be able to play your voice notes, your questions live on air, and then I must and should be able to answer it because your calls are coming. I'm not seeing any of them. All I'm seeing is missed calls, missed calls, missed calls. I'm not seeing any of them. I don't know if anybody can tell us exactly how to deal with this very issue because a lot of calls are coming in, but it is not ringing out. We cannot see it. We cannot see it. Perhaps I should try to switch off the system and bring it back on again. I do not understand why it's behaving like this. Now it is, I think it's jammed actually. I believe that it is jammed. I believe that it is jammed. We are live and we are direct and I'm thinking, let me see if I can take line, of course, from the other line. I have a caller on the line on WhatsApp. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Please give us your name and where you're calling us from. My name is uh, Okoto Chinedu. I'm calling from Istanbul, Turkey. From Istanbul in Turkey. Please go ahead while listening. So I've been following you for a while and I really like what you are doing. And I say, let me use this opportunity to greet you for opening the eyes of our, our people. Nigeria is really, is really, really bad. And we don't want it anymore. Nobody, nobody in their right mind wants the zoo. Nobody in their right mind would want a zoological republic. It is not possible. Nobody with their right senses would want or wish to come from a place as backward, from a place as idiotic, from a place as primitive as the zoological republic. That is why we are doing all we can to remove ourselves from it, to go back to who we were before the white man came, because the white man has no right to come to Africa to create nations in Africa. They have no right to do that. And we cannot allow them to continue with such idiocy. I cannot go to Europe to create a country for them. They are not God. That is why we have been misled. We have been misled. Everything they bring to us in Africa, we swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Be it religion, be it anything that it is. We can't allow it to continue. 
Japan is doing very well. Most countries in the in the Far East Asia are very, very indigenous and they are doing exceptionally well. There is no reason why we cannot replicate the same in the land of Biafra and of course effectively across Africa. As a matter of fact, it is about time we stop behaving like idiots and reason like human beings. Thank you very much for your call. I have another caller on the line, if I'm not mistaken. This caller on the line on WhatsApp, give us your name and where you're calling us from, please, if you may. Sir. Good morning yes, to you. Daniel Naudo. I'm calling from the zoo. Which part of the zoo are you in? Lagos. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Lagos. I'm from I'm from Ibibo. I'm from Aquaibo, Ibibio. Ibibio. Yes. Thank you very much. And they're doing us very proud. Yes. Our men in Aquaibom are doing us proud. I am so proud of them, you cannot believe. So proud of them have demonstrated once again in that very part that the zoo are calling south south they have demonstrated once again that they are biafra two and two with the work they're doing on the ground and i commend yes, them sir. please go ahead that's true sir that's very true sir that's very true sir so my question is um what are we putting in place to to know where the to know where um like which to know where the the remaining terrorists where they where they are in the in the bushes and in the farmland, the remaining place where they are because it's like once the, the UN security move from one location to another, they they now move in there again to attack people. What we are going to do? What we are the problem that we are having are the governors, not even the zoo army or the police that disguise themselves, take off their uniforms and come to attack us from the back. People, as I said yesterday, people do not understand what we are facing. And it's a good thing you asked this question this morning. We are fighting war on almost three or four fronts at the same time. We are confronting and defeating Miet Yala terrorist group. We defeat Miet Yala. They go back and they call the police and the army. Now the police and the army will attack us from the rear. And with the help of these governors, as I, say, as I said last night, in a place like a Boeing state, we drive them away. We are called to another place. We go to that very place. And then they return to where we drove them from. That is what they have been doing. So what we are now going to do is to make sure that the reserve force that we have, anywhere we clear them, we move the reserve force into that very area to safeguard it while the, mess, the, the, while, while the main vanguard itself, the main rangers themselves, will now continue the hunt from yet yala terrorists in our land and any police or the army that comes should i say to the rescue of all these terrorists will pay the ultimate price as well because we're not joking we're not going backwards okay. we only moving right now in Ebo, in Enubu, okay. the war is going on in this region in our bomb the war is going on in this region and i'm saying to them if you bring in your police and the army to defend these full the terrorists they are all going to die they must be assured of that thank you very much of course i wouldn't expect anything less from an video man i would expect nothing less after all if video is the closest approximation to evil we are one people and let us not allow the flannel janja weed to continue to deceive us thank you very much for calling this morning thank you very very much. they cannot deceive us who are they we are more intelligent than they are thank you very very much we have somebody somebody kindly sent us a message and i'm going to play it because the calls are flooding in that is what is jamming our line the calls are immense it is too much let us try to take this very message good morning my leader my good name is i'm calling from new delhi india i, I am from uli uh calls are coming in they won't even allow us to let me take this very call and see who is there the caller on signal can you hear me The caller on signal, can you hear me? No, they cannot hear me. They cannot hear me, but I can I can hear them. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you, please. Good morning. My name is uh, Mrs. Robert. Mrs. Onajite. Mrs. Onajite, thank you very much, and welcome to the program. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from Germany. From Germany. Please go ahead. The world is listening. Yes. Go ahead. 
Yes, I want to ask a question concerning uh, what is going on in a boy state now. Yes, go ahead. In his place. So, uh, because we know you are a leader and you, uh, you are a father, I know you cannot side the uh, one person and leave the uh, other side. Yes, I will. Like, what is going on in a boy state in his now? What is happening? Therefore, my, Devil man is fighting once and people are dying. What were, yes, go now. ahead, go ahead. So many people have died in our house and uh, my father's house have gone down and devil man is doing nothing about it. So many people are dying. So, sir, I want to ask. Why is this attack? No, hold on. I want to ask you first. Why is this attack? Is it um, Fulani terrorists, Miet Yala, Fulani terrorists? That is carrying out it's these attacks, a, is, or, or is not them? No, it's not a felony. It's a, something concerning land. Land dispute. Yes. The, do so, you do you know how this problem started with this very land? Who started the problem? What, what brings this issue? These people don't have the mind to stand other people to fight or to destroy people's property. It's them for mind that is giving them mind. And giving them the power to fight Isa people and gone because what happened before. That is why they for my gift have the mind since he entered the power, like the person they catch among the people fighting Isa people. He confessed that is there for mind that is giving them mind, giving them gun to fight and destroy people's property and killing innocent people. So, See, Dave, Dave Umahi is aware of what is happening on the ground. But I don't know why our people should be fighting. That is one thing that the Fulani is, uh, that is one thing they do very well. Why should our people be fighting over land? And Fulani people are in, in our land, invading, killing, pillaging, raping, and occupying our forests in a going state. And we are busy fighting one another. Uh, what I want to know is the genesis of the problem. Is this problem a relatively new thing, or has it been there from time? this uh, land dispute yeah it has been happening so much in so many long times but now the way it is now therefore my is the person supporting them okay very good and we know what we're I going to do later what is going on about uh, what concerning the, the issue very good please what i would love to hear it i would love to hear it because we okay. don't you know we are factually accurate here I don't want us, if people are having land dispute or communal clash, clashes, so to speak, we are now saying that the Janjaweed are attacking us. We must be absolutely clear as to what is happening. Absolutely clear. And thank you for bringing this very clarity to this issue this morning. The fighting going on in a point state, a sitting governor is encouraging people to be fighting one another. Unbelievable. I don't know... <laughs> What is it with our people, of our people, and land? The land will be there. The land was there before we came. The land will be there after we are all gone because every living thing one day is going to die. The caller on the line, can you hear me on signal? Can you hear me? Your name and where you are, please. Good, good, good morning, our great leader. Good morning to you. Yes, my name is Hejameze. I am calling from Republic of Ghana. You are in Ghana, the place that Twitter have decided to cite their headquarters in Africa. Because Twitter came and said, we thought that Nigeria is the giant of Africa. We never knew it was a shithole. Now they have packed their bags and gone to Ghana to establish. Please go ahead, we are listening. Yes, sir. My simple question is this. With the manner our governors are doing in the land of Biafra, the way other people are sabotaging us, doing everything humanly possible, aiding and abetting, serving the full Anijan Jawis to, to get their conquest. I am suggesting, is it not high time we give them a shaking hand so that when others see that we have attacked them, they have a visible attack on them or anything that is connected and related to them, I think it will help us and give a warning to other people who might migrate newly to do the same thing they are doing. That is true. I entirely agree with you, but that time hasn't come yet. What we are doing right now is to face the enemy, 
that all the traitors and saboteurs within, when their time comes, they'll be dealt with. In fact, some of them are being dealt with as we speak, but it's not everything that we're going to announce live on air, and they understand it, that our freedom is of paramount importance. We want nothing else more than our freedom. There is nothing else we desire more than the freedom for we be friends. And we are going to do, are we, in fact, we are doing everything humanly possible to make sure that that's the case. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you very, very again, much for calling. Again, again, sir, there's another thing. It's like a question and like a contribution. Go ahead. As they are parading themselves in this uh, uh, 2023 uh, 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 conquest of uh, evil president and this, is it not wise enough for us to seal down anything about campaign, anything about whatever that their ambition in the different land? Because the more we give them that space to do their campaign and do whatever rubbish they are doing, they are thinking that they are, have arrived. Can't we stop every campaign in Ibo land? Because we are not part of Janjaweez and we cannot allow their campaign in our land. Yes, it is, what you have said is absolutely critical. But there is one mistake we don't want to make. There is one mistake we are not going to make. The mistake is this. You don't know these people. You know that democracy and democratic discourse is a universal concept, or should I say, that is what the West is trying to, should I say, um, um, and promote all over the world. What they want to do what they want to do, in essence, is to try as much as possible to say that we are anti-democratic forces. That's what they want to do. Once you say to the US, to EU, and all the rest of them, that these people do not believe in democracy, you become an enemy of the world. That is why we cannot take that very route. But if they rig any elections that they have, then we have every legitimate right to express our grievances. But I do understand what you're saying. Um, our Yoruba brethren are saying also that there's not going to be any elections in 2023 unless you know they discuss referendum, which is where we stand at the moment. But we must be very, very careful not to do anything that will allow the zoo to go to the Biden administration or to go for Britain to help them to go to Europe to say that these are anti-democratic forces. Once we do that, they will try as much as they can to shut us down. So we must proceed very, very cautiously. Very, very cautiously. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, much for that. They are, of course, you know, the useless Facebook. They are cracking and trying to make our life difficult as always. They are trying to make our life difficult as always. But we are going to stop them. They can't stop us from broadcasting this very morning. They can never, ever stop us from broadcasting this very morning. We are live and we are direct and heaven is bearing us witness. Let me go to the line to see who is there. If you are used to calling, please, I beg of you, allow other people to try and call as well. We cannot afford to appear undemocratic. <laughs> Once you do, that is over. If you have called us in the past couple of months, please try not to call us again. Please allow other people, other first time callers, to call as well, please. Very, very important. Allow other first time callers to call us as well, please. I have a caller on the line. Please give us your name and where you're calling us from, if you may. Good morning, my leader. Good morning from here. My name is Pastor Jack. I'm calling from the zoo. I just like my last brother, my leader, just asked. All of us understand that most of the difficulties we are going through now are the governors in Jaffa land. Because even when they launch this Ebube in Kita that we don't know, our local radio stations in our land, when they presented this issue, majority of the people from our land that call the radio station says, ESN is already doing the work. What are you forming Ebube Agu for? Because the way ESN is doing it, they don't, they don't, we don't think any, any other person can do it that way. Even the danger with Army. Because ESN is following these people head on and making sure our land and our bushes and forests are rid of this danger. So the question now, like that my brother asks, what 
strategy or methodology are we going to use to follow this governor? Because the truth is, these people have so their conscience, they have they are determined to work with the enemy, they fully the with to make sure they scuttle our freedom. Is there no way we can handle these people while we are waiting for that right time? Because these people are definitely spoiling something for us, my leader. That is my question this morning, sir. We are doing all we can. It's not everything uh, for obvious reasons that we're going to announce live on air. You know, but what we're, what we're doing is that we have a strategy in the fullness of time to checkmate all these traitors and saboteurs within our midst. They can form a bube, whatever. As I said, they formed the Bunigo last year. It didn't work. Now they're forming a bube, as you said, a bube Nketa, this very year, a bube Chicha. And it's not also going to fly because they need men to be able to do the work for them. And they do not have it because everybody, as you well know, is loyal under this very command. They understand that. Both those who identify with IPOB and those who don't, we are all IPOB in the end. And we are under one command. Everybody, I mean, absolutely everybody. Those who are fathered by the Janjaweed may try all they can. They may do all within their powers to try to stop what we are doing. They have not succeeded in the past. They will not succeed now. They can form whatever they like. In the end, as you well know, we always win. If our Yoruba brethren today can be campaigning very determinedly and resolutely for the freedom of the Yoruba nation, that tells you all you need to know that we have won the argument. We have won the argument. And we must proceed, should I say, very cautiously. We are at a very critical juncture right now. We don't want to do anything that will allow them to go to the world and say, oh, did we not tell you? This is who they are. This is how the Biafra is going to be. Why do you think they floated this? We bought each other. It's because they want an internecine warfare within the Biafran family so that the world will say, oh, can you see them? If you give them freedom, this is how they're going to behave. We know how the Fulanese operate. I'm not even, I wouldn't even be shocked nor surprised if they have a hand in the flare up of the boundary dispute that is happening in Isaiah right now. That has led to the, uh, should I say, loss of life of very innocent people. But we are on top of our game and they understand what is coming. And as I said, it's just a matter of time and it will happen. When I was telling people about the zoo, army and police, you didn't believe me. I said, a hey, time will come when they will not be on our streets. Today, they're not there anymore. If they are on our streets, they will die. They understand it very, very clearly. And today, our streets are clear. So one day, I'm telling you, you shall look for sabotage. One day, you will look for all these traitors. You can never find them because they'll be dealt with. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you very, very much for calling. We are live and we are direct. And of course, the idiotic Facebook is doing all they can to try to make our life a misery this morning, as they always would. As they always would. They always will. But they're not going to succeed. If you have called us before, please refrain from doing so. Allow other people to try to call as well. I have a caller on the line on Signal. This caller, give us your name and where you are. This is Radio Biafra and we are live and the whole world is listening. Uh, good morning, Mazi. My name is um, Emoa Chino. So, David, I'm calling you from Anambra State. Thank you. I am actually calling from Amobia. Please, Mazi, um, one thing I want to ask, you know, that this whole this whole stupidity of our, our uh, the, 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 the people that say it, uh, our elites and um, our um, politicians, sir, I really want to make this, say this to you, that if we don't begin to handle these people one after the other, dealing, dealing with their asses one after the other, I don't think this nonsense they are doing, playing with our people, the lives of our people, will stop. Um, it is right time to begin to handle them in the way they deserve. Because our lives um, is more important. The life of one Igbo man, one Biafra man, is more important than the life of 2,000 Fulani Janjaweed. So we have to, because these people, we are seeing it that they are now playing games with our lives, those that voted them in into power. And if we keep continue, if we continue to keep quiet over this, this nonsense will not stop. So I want to say, when is it going to be ripe for more 
intake, for more intake of the ESN, let it. Let, I, 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 I'm pleading with you, sir, that even myself, I'm even interested. I am pleading with you, please make quick and fast absorption of more ESN. And if possible, if we have our army, please, I'm sorry to be saying this on air. If we have an army, those who want to enroll, to enroll, please. Let us get ready for this final onslaught. This useless people who, want, who, who wants to see what will happen before they get to learn it. And maybe perhaps they might learn it in their grave. So please, if there is anything, please, I want you to speak on the regard of that. Because if there is, I want just forward a way I can begin to enroll myself and those people who are interested. I am begging you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, my dear brother. What you have said is, um, of course, correct. And we are doing everything we can to read our land of all these vagabonds and evil men. We are doing all we can, and believe you me, we are on top of the matter. You will hear the story soon. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Your name and where you're calling us from, if you may. My name is Jojo Bonaya, and I'm calling from Katy, Texas, but I'm from Liberia. From Liberia, husband... you're calling from Texas. Yes. Go ahead, we're listening. Yes. My husband is uh, part of the, the me member of the IPO, and um, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for the good work and continue doing what you're doing. Thank you very much, and I do welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I do hope one day that I may be able to come in Biafra as well. Of course you will. That's why we're fighting. And that is why your husband is part. To be able to show that the land of Biafra is for Biafran children all over the world. We are tired of living abroad. We are tired of living abroad. We are tired. We want to go home. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for your call. Thank you very much for your call. We are live and we are direct. And Elohim is bearing us witness as always. If if Facebook is messing, of course they will mess up. You, you saw what they did yesterday. If they mess you up, please go to Instagram. Instagram is also low data usage. Go to Instagram. If you have not joined Instagram, go and join. You follow me on Instagram so you can get notifications. Anytime we are live on air, you will get notifications, please. If you have called us before or in the habit of calling us always, please allow other first-time callers to try and get through. A lot of people have been trying to get through and they have not been able to do so sometimes even for very many years. Therefore, please allow them at first-time No, can you hear me? No, they cannot hear me, but I can, it's counting for them. I don't know why they cannot hear me. The color signal, can you hear me? No, they cannot. Let's take this other call. The caller on the other line of WhatsApp, can you hear me? No. The call could not connect only in the zoo. That WhatsApp is they can't connect. Only in the damnable zoological republic. Let us take this call. The caller on signal, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling us from, if you wow. may. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Oh my God, I can't believe this. My name is Obi Naibuko. I'm calling from London. This is the first time I'm ever speaking with you, sir. God you bless see, you. You see why I said that people should be very mindful of hugging the line always and allow first-time callers to get through. Please go ahead. We are listening. Wow. Am I speaking with you, Madiki? Yes, you are. Of course you are. Jesus wept. Our record today in my diary. 
Sir, mm. I am from Kent family in London. My name is Obi Nidokwe. Um, yes. <laughs> this is going to be my diary, honestly. So, three questions. I'll get straight to the point for other for other caller's sake. Um, it's regarding the new London UK coordinator. Um, I'm aware we have a new coordinator. Um, one honourable Messi, someone I can't remember the name. Um, yes. Um, so the matter is this, um, I'm aware there was a time London was suspended and eventually the suspension lifted and recently we had a new change of coordinator and uh, I don't know whether you quite are aware since the new coordinator came um, I'm part of the um, executives in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the family, we've not had We've not heard anything from her. And apparently everywhere is silent and waiting for um, action from the new UK coordinator and nothing is happening and is getting, if I'm not mistaken, this is getting to the fourth, fifth or sixth week since the new change of um, leadership was now. Um, uh, questions are coming from people like us that are on the lower Canada and uh, we don't have answers for um, our fellow members in the UK. I'm speaking on personal experience and it's kind of troubling when there's no one to really, really relate to it to give answers to some of the little administrative things that we used to do um, every day, you know, our dues, our meetings, our, you know, but we're expecting the new leadership to take the lead because we believe uh, um, anyone that is a coordinator should represent the fire and the, and the zeal of Ohamadike. And so far, um, we've had it, you know, with our coordinator that we know, and the new one, um, maybe she's on, well, nobody knows, I don't know. Let me not just put what in there. Just want to see what is going on, and uh, maybe you may have a clue to enlighten and encourage, because now we need not encouragement from the Biafra spirit is burning enough, but speaking and speaking and hearing from our leadership is is it is it is, it is natural that it's going to motivate everyone. You know, I'm speaking um, regarding the London and UK um, IPO branch generally. So, any comment you're going to give regarding this would be highly welcome. This is number one. Number two, sir, um, the Ambazonia Alliance. This is a wonderful masterstroke in my own humble opinion, sir. Um, what are we, this is the question, what are we going to take away from this alliance? I know it's going to be positive, but hearing it from the horse's mouth is another dimension that I'm expecting um, an answer from. Finally, the third question is our seven leprous Islamic governors in the seven evil speaking areas of Biafra. Um, I know people have made comments even this morning regarding these governors. Um, so I think in my own opinion, and also I'm expecting you to make a comment or two regarding them. I think I hope should judge these people and come out with judgment upon their head and not just the head, their families. These people, they are the major problem we have regarding our self-determination quest, and not even the Nigerian state, in my opinion. If we do not do anything that actually touch them, touch their families, <laughs> we'll be going round and round like Israelis looking for the way to the promised land. What will take us one day will take us 100 years, but God forbid, until we do something. This is the question. You may not give me an answer. I'm not expecting that. I mean, I'm, I don't need to force that off your mouth. But in my own opinion, something urgent must be done about these people. If we do not, sir, um, uh, it will, I, I, I will leave that with you. But I think something should happen. And not just regarding these governors, their families, things that will touch them. Um, I, will, I will end this particular phone call with another, um, another, I don't know how to put this, uh, God bless you, Ohamadike. Thank you. I'm God bless you. Too. Bless you. I, 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 God, in the timing of heaven, 
this generation is blessed to have you. I, mean, I don't praise people, but I, I believe in my time. Instead of saying the year 2020 and 2021, they will say in the days of Ohamadike. Just like my father said in the days of um, um, Dim. God bless you, sir. So I'll leave the colors, other colors to actually try and get through to you. But I, I please need um, comments on these three, three, three issues of the London coordinator, the Ambassador um, Alliance, and our governors that have sold us out to Fulani. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Madam. Yes. First of all, regarding the UK coordinator, she still um, she hasn't received all the documentation she needs to be able to do her work properly. And I'm asking the previous UK national coordinator to do it before 7 p.m. this evening. Hand over every document in your possession so that our sister will be aware, or should I say, um, be knowledgeable about the structures we have in the UK prior to her assuming that very position. I'm asking Dr. Okachi to make sure that before 7 p.m. UK time today, that our new UK national coordinator is in possession of all the documentation she needs to be able to perform her role properly. She cannot contact people if she doesn't have them. She needs them and it must be handed, I said must, before 7 p.m. today in the UK. Regarding the Ambazonia Alliance, as everyone knows, sometimes you use your tongue to count your teeth. They are our relatives as well. They are, I think that Obasanjo, uh, uh, there was a very compelling piece I read in Premium Times. I think that is one of the more sensible Janjaweed publications you have in the zoo. They wrote something very, very moving. That, you know, Obasanjo is a slave of colonial masters. He's, Obasanjo is one of those, uh, you know, people that the white man wants to meet when they come to Africa. You know, that there is a breed of people that, that you know, uh, the white man wants to meet when they come to Africa. People who are willing to, to how do I know, betray everything betrayable. People willing to serve them, regardless of the pain and the cost to their immediate families. Obasanjo was sent to the same, you see that same Bakasi, you see that same Ambazonia. Obasanjo was sent there uh, during the, I think, late 50s, during the British rule of our land to go and uh, 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 man the boundary, artificial boundary. This is a very interesting story, artificial boundary. Listen, it was even Obasanjo, not only bringing SARS, it was Obasanjo that started collecting Kulanot. The first person to be an army officer to be bribed at the checkpoint was Obasanjo. Go and ask him, he will tell you. Obasanjo was manning a checkpoint, British checkpoint. Oh, my God, African people, they are so useless. Obasanjo was manning British checkpoint inside Ambazonia. There was a party of people going for wedding ceremony. They came to the boundary that Britain had um, drawn to dividing uh, Cameroon and the British controlled um, Nigeria. And they said to Obasanjo, you have to allow us to pass. Obasanjo was a, a, an army officer for the British colonial forces in, in Ambazonia. They said to Obasanjo, allow us to pass. Obasanjo said, um, no, my orders are that you should not pass. This is the new boundary. The people said to Obasanjo, are you saying this is the new boundary? We are going to our next village to go and get married. We are going to bring our new bride from the next village. We are the same people. Obasanjo said, oh, is it true? Yes, this next village, the, 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 we are the same people. And we're only going to get married and come back. Obasanjo said, okay, go well. Obasanjo allowed them to pass. On their way back, they gave him kola nut. They gave him drink. They gave him uh, um, um, oba. They gave him... Um, um Oboroko stockfish that they brought from the from the from the um traditional marriage ceremony. Ask Obasanjo. They even told this was happening in the 50s. The villagers said we are one people. You can't allow France and Britain to come here to divide us and say this is our boundary. We are the same people. This is something that people don't actually understand, and that's what we are going back to. I don't think I need to say much, but that we are one people. The people you have in Cross River State, some are in Cross River, some are in Cameroon. All rubbish. One people. One destiny. One land of the rising sun. That's what we are doing. And concerning the saboteurs we have, as I said, we know there is a stumbling block. I think there was something that the wife of our eternal leader said, Bianca Ujupu, a while back. The people stopping Biafra from coming are those who call politicians. They are the ones stopping Biafra. No, no other person. They are the ones stopping Biafra from coming. 
the so-called politicians that you have. So we shall deal with them. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Please, your name and where you are. They are not paying attention. Once I pick your call, you must speak. If you do not speak, I will have no need to speak with you or to talk to you. Very, very important indeed that you understand this. We are live and we are direct. And Elohim is bearing us witness. Elohim is... When I pick your call, you answer, please. I don't want to be hearing my voice via your listening device. Your name and where you are. Oh, this is Nidia Maka. I'm calling from United States of America, Florida. Thank you very much, my dear sister, for calling. Thank you. I am loyal, sir. Thank you very much. I am so blessed to talk to you today. And I am really, really, really blessed that I can be alive and see a man like you. I thought every man in, in, in Igbo land, in Biafra land, is, has turned to a woman or have all turned to women. I didn't know we still have a man or we still have men in the land. May Elohim continue to bless you guys. You are your team, our non-government and our ESN. I am here in the United States as a Biafra woman. We are 100% solidly beside you. Not, not shaking, nothing mega. But my question to you, Ahamadike, is this. Our young men are dying. Our daughters cannot see husbands tomorrow to marry because our boys are going. So how much more time are we going to wait for? Our, our, uh, you said something today. I read it uh, in a FK's uh, uh, blog where they confiscated... 7,000 something finish. That's 7,000 men gone. Yes. So my question is, they are, they are, I mean, intentionally eradicating our, extinguishing our young men. This is our generation that are killing. This is our generation that are wiping out. Ahamadike, how much more are we going to wait for? When we are dead or when? No. No, we, no. Once one corner is on the ground, Biafra is here. We are women. They thought you are only leading the youth. They don't know there are old women like us beside you. They don't know we have young radical women beside you. We are waiting for you to say go. I'm telling you, when are we going to move? Because our men are dying, our sons are dying, our husbands are dying, our children are dying. And they are being abetted by the so-called Gender weed, slave masters, you call your governor. Once one is down, Biafra is here. And that, that is all. I don't care. I, I know I'm on air. Let your non government locate Hopu Zadima, Omahi, Oko Ibazu. Any of them is down. Biafra is here. And we can't continue burying our young men. This year alone, I buried three of my cousins. And it's unacceptable anymore. Ohamadike, we are waiting for you to say go. Thank you very much for what you have just said. There are people going to the church and praying for husband. As our sister just said. I, in fact, I never saw it from that very dimension. Women are going to church praying, Jesus, give me husband. Jesus, give me husband every blessed day. Not knowing that the husbands they are praying for, that their penises are now in, in, uh, in China. Uh, going to be part of Tom soup or whatever it is that they're going to do it, or maybe traditional uh, Chinese medicine. That you are in the church praying for Jesus to give you husband. I want us to understand that sometimes some prayer points we have, even God, after praying, when we stand up, God will be upset with us for being so foolish and idiotic. These are the things you must understand. For being so foolish and idiotic, because you are you need to fight for Biafra freedom first. I said this thing to people, and I said to our women, people who should be at the vanguard of this very effort to restore Biafra to give us our freedom should be our women. Because all your men are traveling abroad. Those who doesn't who don't travel abroad, if you're lucky, we will come back and marry from home. If you're not lucky, we will marry wherever we go to. You know, Ebony become now watching. If you go outside and you see a, a nice woman, attractive woman, somewhere you fall in love with her, uh, you know, you know, love has no boundary. You go, you marry her, and you stay there. That is one sister not married at home. That is a diminution of our way of life, our culture, 
our children will not be raised in the way of the ancients. This is something that we need to understand. Stop going to church and praying for Jesus to give you husband. Go and fight for Biafra. Biafra is what is going to give you husband because all those men that SARS are killing, courtesy of the British High Commission, all those people that you now have their penises all the way in China, they will be alive and they will marry all of you. This is something that we must understand. And the time to understand it is now that this very movement we have embarked upon. You must understand, please. It is even for the benefit of the women. You must understand it. We are live and we are direct. Let's take this call. The caller on signal, can you hear me? The caller on signal, can you hear me? Oh my goodness. They are there. I can hear the static on the background, but they're not saying anything. So we move from this very person to go to the next person that wants to speak to us. We need people that wants to talk to us. If you want to talk to us, we will take your call. The caller on signal, can you hear me? Thank you. God bless you. May your days be long, my Lord. You too. Thank you. Marzi, please, I have a question for you. Um, my question is this. Please, um, look at Ohaneze. Look at the governors. Look at the people mm -hmm. I call the group of Iflifus and saboteurs. Look at the uh, police and military. And look at other group, Biafra agitators. Mazi, you promise us that you will answer every question here. Please explain this thing to me. How did, because these are questions that they ask us when we go out there to preach Biafra. Before then, my name is Brian Daniel. I'm calling you from New York. Yes. Um, right. It's past 3 a.m. here. And I just have to be awake to make sure I speak with you because here on Radio Biafra is where we worship. So my question to you is this. Among all these people that I've mentioned to you, I said, can you gently explain to dear friends how this group of people all got it wrong? Why do you and the IPOB have been accused of claiming to got it right? My number one question is that. Please. Number two, do you think that if these governors will turn back, looking at what you said yesterday in your live broadcast, he said if they will go back into their bedroom and think for one second, do you think that you will have room, IPOB will have room to forgive them if they go back and they think, as you said yesterday? And again, will they be forgiven? Looking at what you said the other time, that they will be tried in public. If found guilty, will be hanged. That's my number two question. Then again, one more thing that I want to say is that there are three things that has been destroyed in Nigeria. And these three things are the only things that could have helped the common man to fight for their way. One is protest. Everybody know that there is no way you can make a protest in Nigeria again, in the zoo. Example is what happened in Abuja, where they hired the talks. Everybody saw it. So they have killed everything about protest. Then election, where we can select who we want to lead us. Everybody saw what happened in Imo State. And you also forewarned us last time that we should not go and vote. We disobeyed you. Everybody mounted pressure on you. We went and we put ourselves in the trouble. Now, everything about the election has been destroyed. Now, the third one is death. Now, you know, even me, I am looking for the head of Unwiki. Even if I go now and cut the head of Unwiki and they present it, they will say no. They will produce another Unwiki tomorrow morning. An impostor <laughs> tomorrow morning. And they say that the one I got is monkey head. It's not weak because now politicians in Nigeria don't die in the zoo. Politicians don't die in the zoo again. They will produce one immediately. As as, so they, as they did with the late dead Buhari, they gave us somebody yeah, now from the Nigeria. Not the rest of them. So now, protest cannot work. If you protest, they will kill you. They will bring us and join. You come to election, you go and vote. They bring the Eflifu and they put there. You have time you waste in the going to pulling unit is in vain. Then the candidate die, they manufacture another one immediately and put it. So these three organs has been destroyed. What are you going to do? Are you going for war to solve this problem? Do you need help? 
Now, where do you need help? I, I will answer. I will help? answer your question. Number one, they said, "How come?" Do you? Let me ask you a simple question. Do you think that we got it right? Or are we getting it wrong? Mas, believe you me. I believe you got it hundred percent right. I myself. Because the people who ask me these questions. To I I you, want. Uh, let me tell. Let me tell you one thing. Those people don't know about what we are doing. We never, I never woke up one day and decided on my own to go and fight for my people to fight for Biafra restoration. It was something that was planted in me. I don't know from where. And I got up and I said, I'm not going to do it because our people are very, very difficult. Our people are an ungrateful bunch of people, but they are lovely. Don't get me wrong. Our people are, are amazing. It takes you time to be able to, because let me tell you one thing is that our people in the main are reasonable human beings. We are highly intelligent. People of Biafra are highly intelligent. Before they follow you in anything, they must see need, reason, or cause to do so. They just can't wake up one morning and start following you. That is why no matter how much money you spray, after they take your money and they finish eating it, they will tell you go to hell our people needed the truth and they needed to be convinced because after the war something very dreadful happened to us as a race i said this does this song before i want somebody to can find it for me i can't find it it's called unkosin one it was played after the war what it means is that our people even came close to losing faith in god almighty in heaven after the war they felt like jobs you know the founder of apple Steve Jobs said he will no longer believe in God. There cannot be God in heaven, and this type of suffering will be going on in Biafra. That was why he's going to church. The founder of Apple, the man that made Apple what it is today, Steve Jobs, he was of Iranian descent. Most people don't know this. He was so disgusted with what happened during the war to Biafrans that he said, God, you cannot be in heaven, and this is happening on this earth. Our people felt that way. If our people can come close to losing faith in God, how about mere mortals? That was why uh, all the leaders that came after the war, with the exception of Akan Ibiam and um, um, Sam Mbakwe, that came after the war to try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, introduce a semblance of what I call identity and cohesion amongst our people, who we are all dead. They went to acquire bomb. They went to Cross River. They went to River State. They went to all these places. Igwa Cha, so to speak. When I say Igwa Cha, it only means the upland, of course. Once I use rivers, it covers both the upland and the coastal region. They went and told them that you see this, your relatives, although you're Igbo, you're, not, you're, you're no longer Igbo anymore. They took them from us. They went to Eboin State. They took three communities in Eboin, three local governments in Eboin, and gave it to Benue State and said they're now part of the North. So the effort to destroy us as a people was so deep and telling. It told on us. We became very desperate. Our people started saying, if you cannot beat them, you join them. Until Elohim determined that we should come. What we are doing is to beat them, never to join them. We must be, if we cannot beat them, we beat them. That is why we stood on the ground of truth, because we know that there is something that is irreducible where we come from, which is truth. That was why we say, once you stand on the path of truth, our people will follow you. Anywhere you go, they will follow you. They will sacrifice anything for you, because that is who they are. They are lovers of truth. They never found people that were able to speak the truth and damn the consequences until Tukovikabiyama determined that we should come. Until we came. Now they said, these are truth tellers. And then we are going to follow. That is why we are where we are today. And concerning what you said about uh, soldier go, soldier come in the zoo. Do you know that this thing you said, I have been to the US many times and explained to US politicians that you are asking us to be part of, or some of you are arguing that Nigeria should be won because of what you're getting. But every avenue to effect any positive change in the society has been denied to people. If you don't have electricity, 
you want to generate electricity, they will say, you know, you have to go through NEPA. You want to change your government, they will say, go and vote, and they will read it in front of your eyes. We explained all these things to them. Yet they refused to understand. That was when it dawned on us that some white people will prefer Africa to be in perpetual darkness because it makes them to feel good. And we don't have the type of natural boundaries you have in most Southeast Asian countries that manage to beat colonial mentality. There they have natural boundaries. Even when the colonial masters left, they went back to the drawing board and redo their own natural boundaries. If we had a Biafran nation, if we had an Oduduwa nation, if we had a Middle Belt nation or Arewa nation, nobody can read elections in it. Because you nobody can loot the treasury because you're the same people. But when you bring all these desperate groups of people together in one contraption like you have in the zoo, life becomes extremely tough and sometimes even meaningless. And the white man trying to convince, let me tell you something, you think our people are stubborn? Trying to convince the Africa desk of the United States um, State Department is the most difficult job in the world. To even convince them that Fulanese are the ones sponsoring the attack against innocent people, it took nearly four years. to Despite the availability of overwhelming evidence, yet the United States, the Africa desk, at the United the State Department, their foreign um, uh, ministry, they refused. They refused. Even till today, they are still paying some consultants to say it is farmer header clash. Farmer header clash. They came into Benue. They renamed Benue a Fulani town. They went into Plateau. They they anointed their own person, the soon to be the mayor of Jos. The white man will see all this evidence, but they will say no. Do you know why? Because they are being lobbied, which is another word for bribery. Fulani, they have money. They stole money to blind the whole world with their British masters to make them not to see where we are coming from. So it doesn't matter the validity of your claim or evidence you have against Nigeria. You can present it from now to the kingdom come. They will still say no. That is why one diplomat called me by the side and advised me at the EU and said we should stop writing all these letters we are writing to them, that they are tired of it. I said, but he said, what have you done? They are coming to kill you. What have you yourself done? It is only when you do something that we, the world, can now come in and say, oh, what is the matter? But if you keep writing letters, keep lamenting, keep trying every day, nobody will come. A white man from France told me at the EU, to my face. That is why we are doing what we are doing. And we are not going to stop doing what we are doing until Biafra is restored. One thing, my dear brother, you must understand is this. We are fighting a very credible and formidable enemy. The identity we have today, whether we believe it or not, was crafted by the British. Our essence, we derive who we are from our colonial experience. That is why somebody who went to school can stand up and say to my face, you are a secessionist. A secessionist, people who have been living in their land for over 5,000 years, is seceding from something that is only 60 years old. And these are educated people, allegedly. Oh, my God. In heaven. We are fighting the ignorance of a black man because most black people are naturally stupid. That is what we are fighting. Once you conquer that ignorance, everything becomes easier. Look at all the years we have been preaching. Every type of name they called us. People today in Yoruba land agitating for freedom, we are calling us names only two years ago. But we remain resolute and consistent. Now they have gotten our message. And I do believe that in time to come, Middle Belt will get it as well. And everybody will be free. If we are not prepared to die, there is no way we can have freedom. That is why we are going to fight with all that we have to be free. We are not going to allow them. Look at okay, look at who opposed them. The Sarakin Fulani of Imo State. Some people in Imo State are calling him governor. Who opposed them? And these are the people you are fighting to save. They know that who opposed them got there through the back door that the Fulani imposed him. Abak Yari single-handedly picked him because he's a criminal. He's a 419. That is the type of leadership they want to foist on our people.
so they can control us. Our people, they went to school, they know all these things, but they cannot, they cannot do anything about it. Because they have no soul, they have no conscience, because they're compromised. And that is why this very effort, this very fight must continue until we win it. What thank was you a, so much, Maz. Thank you very much for calling. Maz, will you forgive the governors if they come back to you? Uh, everybody is for God to forgive. It's our duty to present them before God, and God will decide. What? Who am I? Am I God to forgive sin? Can I forgive sin? Can you yourself? Can you forgive sin? Can you forgive? No, sir. Can you forgive sin? Not at all. And it's for God to, no, when sir. they when they meet God, then God will decide what to do with them, whether to forgive them or not. When we pray, even the Lord's prayer that I prayed this morning, forgive us our sins. They, they, when, I, when I was praying, I said, uh, Nam the Kano, forgive us our sins. I said, God, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It's when we present them before God, then God will decide if he is going to forgive them. Those people are evil. Do you know how many people they have killed? In their own time, 7,500 penises of our young men are in China. Nobody's talking about it. Under the watch of people you are calling your leader, our governor, under their watch, our penises is in, is in, is in China. 7,500 women will not get married as a result of the death of... This is the one we know. Seventh is the one that we know. So that means that even your sister may not get married. To some, oh my God, our people, I wish we can reason. Uh, one, I, you know, I keep praying and I say to God, don't give us anything anymore as black people. Just give us common sense and the ability to reason. There are women now being born, or should I say, existing right now. A minimum of 7,500 will not get married. And we we'll go about and say, oh, she's not married. She's the wayward. She's this. Because the husband who should have married her is dead. The penis is somewhere in China. Some are in prison. Some have been killed, abducted every blessed day under the watch of the same people that are claiming they are now coming to defend you. With a, 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 a watch. The same people under their watch, under the watch of these same governors, the, the um, army and the police have been abducting and killing our people, cutting and opening them up, selling their body parts abroad. Under them, these are the people claiming they're going to defend you. And the, some of you idiotically, oh, now we have security with the governors, the same people. Anybody that supports uh, a, a disabled body teacher is part and parcel of those, in fact, has a hand in the killing, in the abduction, and the, in the harvesting of organs of our people. Remember Ezu River. You remember Ezu River very well. There is something that some of you do not know. Do you know that some people from SARS ran abroad to go and seek asylum? That people are going to kill them. Let me answer your question this way. When the revolution comes, the only thing that can save the people, since we can no longer protest, we can no longer change our leaders through the ballot box, the only option left is a revolution. There is no other option. No other option. I don't know. The problem in Nigeria, part of it is Yoruba journalism. Yoruba journalism is, is, is evil. Yoruba journalism, they are the ones telling you, oh, 2023, uh, Jagaban, Asakaban, all these idiots. They keep, oh my God, you are feeling pain. They are the ones applying the ointment all the time, telling you there is hope with election. But they themselves know very clearly that election do not work in the zoo. Because INEC is a full and a property. If they will leave election and Britain will say it was free and fair and that's the end of the matter. Look at Hope Pusodema from number four. Number four, no, not number two, not number three, from number four. In front of your eyes, Supreme Court lied, falsified the figures of INEC in a country that claims that civilized. Why shouldn't I call Nigerians animals? Why shouldn't I call Nigeria a zoo? Useless people everywhere. That is what we are fighting. If you know the, it, the worst thing to fight in this life is ignorance. Ignorance is a demon. That is why in the Western world where you are, anybody who defeats, there are some unseen evil in society. Ignorance, poverty, deprivation, hunger, homelessness. These are, these are, these, these are, they, they are demonic. That is why if you defeat hunger, they call you a saint. They call you maybe St. George, St. Matthew, or whatever, because you have defeated something that 
the eyes cannot see. You know, when, when, if I'm fighting with you now, I can see you. Maybe you hit me, I hit you back. But you are fighting something that is invisible. Hunger is invisible. Deprivation is invisible. Poverty is invisible. For you to fight and conquer it. Oh my God in heaven. You don't know. That is what we are fighting. We are fighting an invisible enemy. But I thank Chuku Kikabiyama in heaven that we are winning. Yoruba journalism, believe you me, is worse than SARS. Yoruba journalism is so virulent, it's untrue. I pray that they repent. I pray that they repent. That Nigeria is still standing today. It's partly down to Yoruba corrupt journalism. They are the problem. And that is why the foreigners have taken their forest over. That is why the forest of Yoruba land is gone. To Fulani Janjawi. Because of the evil of Yoruba journalism. Had they stood on the path of the truth to say that IPOB did nothing, your friends did nothing, you cannot kill them, you cannot be doing what you're doing. We we'll be, won't we'll be where we are today. Things would have changed. But now, as I say, I can't see how back on. Now, the time that Pafasuranti's daughter was killed, it dawned on them that, that what Nam the Kanu is saying is correct after all. What those people, IPOB, Biafran's agitating for, maybe that is that is high in it. Now they're agitating as well as we are doing. And we wish them well. The same way we are discussing corrupt politicians in our land is how Yoruba people should be discussing corrupt journalism. Corrupt Yoruba journalism is responsible for the suffering and pain of the people in the zoo. Thank you very much. We are live and we are direct, and of course, heaven is bearing us witness. We are whiter than white and whiter than snow. That is why everything we say always, always come to pass. Always come to pass. It must come to pass because heaven is with us. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling us from, if you may. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Anyao Chikese Leonard. You're calling from where? I'm calling from UAE. United Arab Emirates. Please go ahead. We're listening. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I have uh, like a contribution to make, sir. Actually, this is my first time to reach you for many years now. This is my first time. I will come today as a blessed day to me. Um, regarding the uh, leaders that we imagine Biafra land, whenever Biafra comes, I have a contribution to make. And I believe that they uh, lawmakers those that will be the lawmakers they are listening as well um to all political holders i am saying that anybody that would emerge as a political holder his and his or her family must be in Biafra land his children everything wife must be in Biafra land not the ones that you are a leader, your children are scrolling abroad. No, it must be under the law as a law. And that type of law should be under rigid law, not flexible. It must never be changed. All the children must be in Biafra land. Hospital, everything you are sick, you must be treated in Biafra land. Not the type that you are sick, you'll be flown abroad for treatment. Another one is, for the uh, so-called governors, please, sir. They have done a lot. They have done a lot, and they have endured a lot. As the, the previous caller has said, if one of them is down, I think others will then. Keeping them, romancing them, will, will never solve an issue. Keeping them, romancing them, complaining, crying, it will never solve any issue. When one is down, others will learn. So this are my this are my two my two areas of contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, and I welcome it. Um, there is something called fallout and consequences. Can we handle it? I can, but can you? Those guys, they are evil. Believe you me, they are evil. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning, sir. Hello. Good morning to you. Raise your voice for me, please. Yeah. It's better now. Okay. Your name and where you're calling from? Okay. Uh, my name is Austin. I'm from uh, Igodomigodo. Igodomigodo. 
The key that opens the key. The key that opens the key. My goodness. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I'm calling from Italy. I want to know, you know, all of us now, we are all one because we are the outside. Of so course. We, have, we should have no friends for each other. Yes. So my question now to you, when are we going to change this narrative? Because this, uh, this uh, 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 governor, this uh, killer, this demonic, this, this blood sucker, they kill us to gain their, their uh, position in politics. Yes. To become a governor, president, whatever they want to achieve. So when are we going to change now to start killing them? Because our brothers, our brothers are dying every day. Every day I'm sharing here. Then somebody I'm, to, I'm, I'm with him. For many years, we are together. He just visited Dodana. now. He's gone. He's gone. My goodness. He's gone. He went to Ebony. Ebony is gone. He's not coming back here again. He's not coming back. No go to. I'm not in again. Only phone call. Then he's gone. He's gone. When are we going to? What oh man is not about to see today? What, what is happening? When are we going to take take what the right belongs to? The Lord, the Lord belongs to us. We didn't belong to them. No. Yeah, to take their children, children. My Lord, when are we going to take the narrative? This is just my own time. Please. Please. We Don't need to start. It has to be a revolution. I agree with you. Yes. And as our brother, is, it has to be a revolution. Because, because the thing is that we you cannot protest. You cannot change your leaders through the ballot box. They are killing you every blessed day. There is nothing that, that, that you, you can rise up and say, oh, I'm proud of this very thing where I come from. The only alternative is a revolution. And as I said to them during NSARS, when they introduced their tribe and religion and all that nonsense, as I said, that is why Yoruba journalism is evil. When they introduce their tribe and their religion and all that rubbish, because they want a Yoruba man to be president in 2023, they never knew that they were mortgaging or sacrificing the, the future of their own children. We must rise up in a revolution. If you allow, let's say, um, um, a, a group of people to do it, they will label it um, um, a, a tribal takeover of Nigeria. I know them very well. That's what they do. Britain is in control of, I wouldn't say control of world media, but they have significant influence. Fulani, they have over $30 billion to bribe anybody bribable to, get, to make sure that their own narrative is what gains traction at the end of the day. What we are going to do is very simple. We continue this campaign we are on until the people will one day come out on the streets and say, we are no longer going back unless you give us a referendum. And when that happens, every politician will be in trouble. We must be able to rise up and confront this evil. As the previous scholar said, what we are going to have in the new Biafra. Nobody can travel, not nobody. If you're a politician, you cannot travel abroad for medical treatment. There'll be no siren when you're going to work in the morning. If you cannot take public transport like other people, you go home and you sit down. The only people who can travel with siren is the president or the prime minister of the various ethnic um, nationalities we have. Let's say economy go them. Will their premier will be able to travel with, not even with siren with the dispatch riders because there'll be no noise. The only people that can make noise is the fire service, the police, and the ambulance. Nobody else can make noise. Your children must not even school in, in Biafra land. They will go to the nearest school to your house. The nearest hospital, when you're sick, you cannot travel more than outside the nearest hospital to your house. These are the things that are going to have in place. Such things cannot obtain in the zoo. And then Biafra land, there will be no generator. For every, from the president down. If, if so, that if the president, if we don't have light, the president will not have light. If we don't have light, not even president, the prime minister will not have light. If we don't have light, the, the politicians will not have light. So there will be no generator. We must make sure that our national grid is working to give us power 24 hours a day without fail. For you to have all these things in the zoo called Nigeria of our lives to be better, I agree with you, there has to be a revolution. A very serious, bloody revolution. But let me tell you one thing about why revolution can never work in Nigeria. It can never work. Let me use the end SARS as an example. During end SARS, Fulani managed to convince their servants, the houses, not to come out to protest, to join the end SARS protest. Because being black people, all they saw all they wanted to see, all they wanted to see is 
in Nigeria, they can take advantage of. That's all they wanted to see. Is a Nigeria they can take advantage of because they think that they are very smart. They think they are very, very smart. So what they wanted to do is, you people in the South, you can kill yourself. So we heard it Nigeria now. When you have people thinking that way, how can you be in a country with them? How is that possible? How is that possible? I ask you. That is something that our people must understand. That is why everybody must conduct this very revolution in their own village. Yoruba, do revolution where you come from. We are also going to do our own where we come from. And that is something that most people must understand. That is something that we are working towards. And that is why we are going to win in the end. We understand the zoo. We know their mindset. We know how they think. We understand that very, very well. And that is why we are doing the best we can today to make sure we educate our people sufficiently enough to understand what needs to be done for us to gain this freedom that we're all yearning for. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Thank you very, very much. I'm so sorry you lost your friend. Thank you very much. And I remain blessed. Remain blessed. Thank you very, very much. We are live and we are direct. And of course, heaven, as always, is bearing us witness. Heaven is bearing us witness as we speak. Let us go to the line to see if there are people there to call us, or should I say, give us the benefit of their own opinion. Absolutely, uh, as always, this one has crashed totally and completely. I mean, the WhatsApp, that I, the number I've just given to you, is not even, uh, people are not even allowing, it, it can't even ring. To make matters worse, it cannot even ring. It's not even ringing out. Let us go to the line to see if we have people there. On, oh, my word. So many people trying to get through to us. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? The caller on signal. The caller on signal, can you hear me? Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning to you, please. Your name and where you're calling us from? Tom from Sapple. From Sapele, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just want to answer a question. I'm from Ijoland. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I know you know, I know you are not familiar with Ijo's side, so I will use a boy state as an example. Who said I'm not familiar with with Ijo's side? Who is on who said I'm not familiar? <laughs> who said that? I am familiar. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Okay, sir. So, um, my question is that, you no, know, you were saying that um, some Igbos are in Kogi state. Yes. Okay. So, if they want to conduct referendum, and those that in Kogi state doesn't win the majority, will they still join the Biafra? Yes, because our referendum is going to be conducted based on ethnicity, not based on boundary drawn up by one Janjaweed in Abuja or Lagos before. What is the meaning of Kogi State? What is the meaning of Kogi? One idiot woke up one morning and decided to draw boundary. No, it will be based on ethnicity. Those things that were wear before the white man came. Before the white man came, you are a job. Is that correct? Yes. There are Ijo people in Delta. Is that correct? Yes. Ijo people in, um, in is it in Ondo? Is that correct? Ondo State. Yes, sir. Ijo people in Rivers. Yes, sir. Ijo people in Bayasa. Yes, sir. Then, when we conduct a referendum, it will be Ijo people in all these areas that I've mentioned as one Ijo block voting if they want to be part of Biafra or they want to be slaves to uh, Fulani Janjaweed. The same thing everywhere. In the same day that we conduct the referendum for Igbo people, it will be Igbo people in Benue State, Igbo people in Kogi State, Igbo people in even in Ekonomiko the land, those that identify themselves as Igbo, like which is a banker, Igbo people in Delta State, Igbo people, remember, in Cross River, Igbo people in Akwaibom. Igbo people in rivers. It's endless. They will now come together to decide if they want to be part of Biafra or not. That's how it's going to be done. 
I cannot sit down somewhere and one idiot will tell me, oh, Igbo land is only is five states, is five from the southeast. Our brother asked earlier from New York, why is it that the, those that went before us, they got it wrong and we got it right? And I said, if you claim you are a leader and you allow your people to be balkanized and bastardized into different states that you have no control over, then you are not a leader. You are not a leader of your people. Look at what is wrong with it. Even if I want a job to be a nation on their own, that is my preference in life. I want a job to be a nation of their own, to have their own prime minister running the affairs of a job land with a job value system. That's what I want for everybody. Freedom for everybody. But our people don't understand it. If you go it alone, you cannot win. It's as simple, it's as simple as that. If you do it alone, you can never win. But together we win. We come back. And then everybody to your tent, O oh Israel. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. A very intelligent question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. From Sapele, of course. When we the, when we when we finish our our referendum, the referendum campaign will be so sweet, isn't it? Very all the arguments, all the history that they have been hiding from us, we now reveal it because they're going to ask me, why do you want a Jordan to be part of Biafra? Then uh, that's history I've not told you yet. Oh, I'm waiting for the campaign for referendum. Then I will unleash it. Then uh, uh, they'll be the ones crying and embracing me, saying, "Oh, I never knew before." The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are. Thank you, bro. Can you hear me? You are listening to your. Yeah, turn down your system, please. Turn it down. Turn it down and listen Good to morning, us. Sir. Good morning to you. Your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling from Nsuka Enugu State. Nsuka Enugu State. What is happening? What is your name? Your first name only, please. My name is Ozemena. Ozemena. What is happening in Enugu today? Are the Fulani still killing and rampaging? Yes, sir. Fulani attack a bag one day for his day, sir. Two days ago, a bag one. Did we, yes, did we repel them? Did we stop them? No. No, they come in uh, by ten o'clock in, uh, in the night, sir. They came in the middle of the night. Yes, sir. Has the Enugu State Governor said anything? So he hasn't said anything yet. Enugu State Governor hasn't said anything yet. Yes. Sir. After an attack against his people in a bad one, and this, yes, this, 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 and he's a leader. Unbelievable. Yes, sir. A man that I happen to like very much is unbelievable. And I don't know what makes it with leaders. Your people are being killed and you're quiet. And you're quiet. Anyway, go on. Ask your question or tell us what you want to do sir, this sir, morning. Please, sir, please, we, we need your help, sir. I love the love, sir. Please. Tell us to come in. Where? Which territory is, is having problem now? Tell us. Yeah. I am sure that men on the ground are listening. Men is does does it mean that the Fulani is they have a camp there, a settlement there, yeah, illegal they settlement? Have, they have a camp, sir. They have a camp, sir. Where is the where is the camp located? Okuje side, Okuje, Okuje forest. My goodness. It seems there are so many. You know, we drive them from one side. They go to another. That is called called call the Afro. Huh? Like yeah, running stone right. mock, you you go to one side, they go to the other side. Huh? How many are there? Are these people? Do, do they ever finish? My goodness. No, we'll do it. It will be done. You will come back next week, Friday, and tell me what happened. Because we are going, we are going to move into that area. Of course, we are going to. It's Eastern Security Network. Anywhere we are needed, we go there immediately. We are everywhere. Where is it? There is a bad one. Is under attack as well. Where is the where is it? Just making mouth. People stand up and talk rubbish and go back to the comfort of their homes with their siren every day. You know, you know, Fulani are very clever. They chose idiots to preside over our lives. That is why things are the way they are today. But it can no longer continue. It can no longer continue. We are live and we are direct. This is early in the morning. It is to nine in the blessed land of Biafra, I should say. I think it's about 11 minutes to 9 a.m. in the morning. We are live and your people are calling us from all over the world, my goodness. The caller on the line, can you hear me please? Your name and where you are, if you may. The caller on WhatsApp, can you hear me? For the final time, can you hear me? Good morning, 
my leader. Good morning to you. Very, very clearly. Yes, your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, my name. My name is Abe Jukwobia. I'm calling you from America, New York. From New York. Thank you very much. Yes, bronze. From bronze. Yeah, my, right. my leader, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy someone just called now, complaining of what is happening in Suka. It happened to be where I come from. I come from a place called Enugu Ezike. Enugu Ezike, yes. And Enugu Ezike, yes. Enugu Ezike has become a new abode for all the Fulani that we are chased out from uh, Olo and Abakiniki. All the surrounding villages, because we are located at the border with Benue. All mm. the, the, the bordering villages in that very community have been overtaken by new Fulani settlers. So, uh, we are moving there. You will hear the story in the next few days. We are moving to that place to even push them further into Upper Benue. Right, we are moving there. What yeah. you, you hear what will happen? You hear it. One other question, my leader. One other question, my leader. Please, I want you to explain to us what you mean by chain of command before I ask my question, sir. Chain of command is very simple. The order governing every order comes from me. And I give it to my to, to those below me to pass to those below them until it gets to the field officers we have. That is the chain of command. That order comes from only one source, from me. Yeah. And no other person. All right, sir. Yes, that's what it means. Why I ask this question is because uh, in the Suka district, yes. there was an internal problem, internal crisis. And uh, the new continental rep, who is a uh, Tari Emi, he yes. questioned the national coordinator of Biafra land and even the state coordinator from Enugu state and went down to the district and removed the district coordinator and brought somebody that just joined this struggle last year and the thing is chairing the... No, no, it shouldn't happen that way. He should not be contacting, he should not have a hand. Africa Continental Rep deals with only national coordinators, does not have any involvement in the day-to-day -day running of the family on the ground. That is our structure. That is how it's going to be. That is how we are structured. I know that. I know that. That's why I wanted to hear from you because I know he's listening. He just wants to uh, ruin everything in our community, in our own district. He removed our district coordinator. Are you sure he was the one that removed him? Yes, I spoke with him before the day he went to our district. I even told him because of the. No, no, he, he shouldn't. Our, our Africa rep should be traveling to Africa, African countries and dealing with national issues. The issue in that very place should be dealt with by the Enugu State Coordinator under the guidance of Biafra Land Coordinator. If there is anything that our Africa rep wants to see done on the ground, he will tell the National Coordinator of Biafra Land, who will now tell the State Coordinator, and in fact, um, his remit stops at the national level, not the local level. Yeah. Yes, to stop and, uh, any discussion. I want to conclude by saying I know that they, I know that they are listening. The, the 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 former district coordinator may not come back, but the person he put there now is just like Hopus or Dima. He just joined the struggle last year, and I don't think it will be good for us, especially now that we are facing the struggle. Thank you, my leader. Thank you very much for calling. Uh, thank you, thank, thank you me. very much from 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 the USA, of course. We are live and we are direct. Uh, isn't it very funny how, can you see how all the Umunchoncho baby saboteurs, we are defeated with consistency, truth, and sound argument. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. They have been reduced to nothing. Let me tell you one thing that some of you may struggle to understand. Our people, some of you prefer to showcase your strength at home, like the idiots at Obunike uh, yesterday uh, robbing a bank with the help of DSS to, to, tie, uh, to say it's IPOB that did it. You cannot go outside. Look at now in, 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 in Enugesike. That is full of idea. You won't go there and do courtism. We, it's, we are, courtism is hard, you are a hard man. We need you in Enugu now to go and fight. The full of you are in the village disturbing people. The same way that a sabo behaves. One sabo take this young, young ones that they give data money, 2,000 naira every week to, for a charge. And uh, they go online to be talking rubbish. Fools everywhere. What a half hour, I ask them. 
How far? I'm asking them. Because they understand that we are formidable. Their masters could not defeat us. Now they have sent some idiots within to, 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 to try making a fool of themselves. I want to call somebody who called me all the way from Germany. I want to get them back on this very program. If you're lucky, we will try to call you back if you are fortunate. That is, I have the caller now on the line. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. My name is Edwin Okolo. Your name is what? From Kogi State. Edwin Okolo from Kogi State. <laughs> Say that name again so the world will hear you. What is your name and where are you from? Okolo Edwin from Kogi State. Okolo Edwin. Are you an Igbo man or are you a Kogi man? And Ohaneza is saying five southeastern states. And they, they, they claim they are leaders. Your name is Okolo. You are an Igbo man. You are indigenous to a place they carved in Tokogi state. And the people are telling me that you are from the north. So that when the caliphate is speaking, they are talking about you as a northerner. Do you accept that? No, no the, the problem uh, in, uh, in Easter... Eastern region, is a, the problem is governor. The, the governor of Eastern, they are very bad. They are the one that allow the Fulani people to come and do rubbish in that in, in the area. Even in my own place in Kogi said we uh, we live in the, our place in Isbaji. We don't allow Fulani to end. We don't move to the Fulani as a human being. When I was very small, I used to ask my father, is Fulani, are they a human being or animal? Because they already be in the, in the bush. We don't recognize them, don't take them, don't, don't see them as a human being. But I wonder why Fulani, they are over everywhere in Igbo land. The killing people, Fulani, and they cannot be tried and shoot first, shoot one person in the, in the Kogi state. We will kill them all and kill the cow and throw it in the river Niger. But we wonder why all this has happened in a, from, 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 a, from, a, from, a, from a north to Igbo state. How, how, how does it? I, I'm surprised. How, how come? From Mali. You're saying not. They come from uh, Gambia. All the way from Gambia. From Gambia to, to Akib. At Atloba. From all the way from Gambia. And we say we have governors. What is paining me is that people like you are called northerners. Kogi state is the north. Do you know now they can't put Kogi state as part of his Biafra? You are the evidence as to why I put Kogi state as part of Biafra. Because they carved the Bia France into Kogi State. I reject to be I reject to be not. I'm not a not. I reject to be not. Kogi State is not a not. It's only that how Kogi like a, a, a tongue inside the teeth. No tongue is inside. The teeth cover tongue. See, uh, Kogi says how border with Anambra State. How border with Enugu State. Then how border with Delta State by River by River Niger. How border State by the uh, Do State. It's, very, it's, it's a little bit far from, uh, from it. Kogi says it's, it's, it's supposed to be east. It's supposed to be north. Unbelievable. It's supposed to be north. Unbelievable. Hey, Britain. Britain. It's all this uh, hey. dividing and sharing of this is, 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 that causes the problem. And what is the, is the youth of the youth, all the youth in Igbo land have to wake up? Because we don't wait for our governor, we don't wait for anybody. We don't wait for anybody to anywhere, anywhere we see Flani with cow. We don't you don't listen to King. We don't listen to anybody. Anywhere we see Flani call with cows, we pursue them immediately. We don't, we don't take any order for anybody. We youth, we are very, very, we are very, very organized. Thank you very All much. All the youth that. have wake up. They, we are waking up. I'm not a youth, of course. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an elderly man now. We have woken up. Yeah. And the youths are doing the needful. Yeah, what I'm trying to say. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, the, the youth at home, I'm saying, the youth at home. Yes, yes. The youth at home have to wake up. And they have, have woken up, up, I assure you. Right. Anybody doing cultism, go and look for the nearest Fulani and do your cultism there. Not in the village. If we catch you, you're, you're, you're a gunner. 
Go and do your courtism against Fulani. As they are doing in a Baji, in Kogi, that they claim is part of Fulani Caliphate. It will not be well with, with all those people, I'm telling you. Thank you very much, my dear brother, for this very enlightening call this very morning. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I remember he is in Germany. So we are told he is in Germany. He's from a Baji <laughs> in, in Kogi. And he's uh, supposed to be a northerner. It can, we, we, when they say we northerners, we northerners cannot they, they include him. Oh, zoo. Yes, please, my dear brother, underline your name and where you're calling us from. Uh, my name is Machuku uh, Anthony. Um, I'm calling from India. Thank you very much. Uh, Go ahead. I'm very happy today that I got you. And uh, once again, I say, Machuku, okay, God, I'm going to guide you and protect you. You see? And once again, I try to tell our people, wherever community community is in Igbo land and Biafra land, try and join hand and chest plane from your land. <laughs> I could remember from my town, Anam. Anam is the one fighting for the Fulani. Even this year they came, they gather themselves and chest Fulani out. No matter whatever governor are doing, the bush, the Fulani are dominating. Even the governor, Odiano, don't care about the people they are attacking in Anambra. Means you cannot allow them to attack you or attack your community. Let every community gather together. No matter whatever governor, senator, those criminals are saying, chase the Fulani out of your land. That is only one thing I have to say this morning. Let every community join hand and just fill me out of their land. Thank all you very men much. are dying. We all are dying. Yes. Every woman be us ready to die. If you are ready to die, fill me, we run away from your land. Thank you, Ahmadike. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. And I accept we must all make sure that wherever we find them, we drive them away. The Fulani people living inside the township, we can allow them to stay in the township. There is no problem. But in the bush, the answer is a capital no. We don't want them in our bushes. The the date we have on YouTube and I believe also on my um, Twitter is fourth of April. It is wrong. I don't know why it's coming up with fourth of April. I don't know. It's not fourth. It's a live presentation, question and answer today, being Friday the sixteenth of April. I don't know why it's showing oh four oh four. Please. So do not be discouraged. You're listening to a live presentation. The time now is three minutes past 9 a.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. And um, we have come to the end of our program this very morning. Uh, next week, Friday, we're going to be live on air. And I think maybe this question and answer, we should allow it to run for at least three hours to allow as many people as possible to air their opinion and also advise us as well. You know, everything we are doing is based on what you have asked us to do. All we do is that we define it, we sharpen it, and we implement it. I thank you all very much for listening to us this very morning. As, as always, we have nothing else but IPOB and Radio Biafra to disseminate our message. We must be very strong and resolute all over the world. Anything you're asked to do, please try and do it because all of our actions individually will collectively in due course deliver the type of Biafra that we want. We are under one central command, only one, not two, not three, not four. And that is why we must do things the proper way or else the repercussions and consequences may be too there for us to handle. Once again, I thank you very much for listening to, for waking up very early this morning. For some of you around New York, it's about 3 a.m. in the morning or thereabout. We thank you for listening. Once again, and from me, from here, good morning.
Come on, 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 come on,